Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones and welcome to another film journey. Today I'm joined by my good friend, Chris Moen. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, it's quite, getting quite late here, but uh, tomorrow's a bank holiday, so I'm off, so we need sleep. Uh, yeah, no one needs sleep. Uh, yeah, we're, we're at a little bit of a time difference, aren't we? We are. Six hours to work on it. We had to do a bit of testing during the week just to see uh, exactly what the difference was, but six, I think it is. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I almost wa was uh, in your neck of the woods in May, um, but due to everything, uh, I wasn't able to ah. come by because of just how everything in the global situation is going on. I can't say it or we'll get demonetized or whatever. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you doing good though? I, I'm doing very well. Yeah, things are, I'm getting out of the house every night again, which I think everybody kind of likes, even though I'm, I would call myself an inside person. And it's too much of the same thing, it just gets old very quickly. So I think it's nice to be able to have some sort of structure and routine back. And yeah. I think most people would agree, you know. I would agree with that. Yeah. I, I was stuck in my house for a little bit myself. So uh, until I found basketball. And so I was like, okay, now I can. There you go. I can try. And I was, as I told you before, I was playing golf earlier on. So that's been something that I picked up as well. You know, getting out of the house for five hours this afternoon is, was, was pretty great. Yeah. That's, I mean, if we're not watching films or, or working, you know, that's, that's what we're going to be doing, right? Trying to do something. That's it. Yeah. To occupy yeah, our absolutely. mind. All right. Well, I'm sure most of us uh, know what we're, we're talking about today, but we're going to be going through Chris's film journey. And um, so we always like to start off kind of just uh, with some early memory association with, with film. Um, so do you remember kind of your early memories with movies? Yeah. I, I was trying to think about this before. Like the first films that I've seen in the cinema were Black Cauldron, I've seen Return of the Jedi in the cinema as well but those kind of are such vague vague memories that uh you could kind of fall into one so the bigger memories would have been home video um and i was part of the original format where we had a betamax player not a vhs oh, nice. player and you know it wasn't on before you just couldn't get any betamax player so there was literally one house beside our our local church that was literally somebody's back back room which had a stack of Betamax tapes. So we would nearly come out of church and uh, pick one of those, and that would have been that for the week. And uh, they were never the top shelf titles. They, they just were not available to us. And I'm a, I'm a one abiding memory that sticks to me is we got um, an anime, which is Gatchman, but it was Battle of the Planets in US and UK, I think. And uh, it, was, it was a movie made up of a couple of episodes, and it was really, really cool. You know, as a young kid watching that, mm -hmm. except as VHS and Betamax did, about halfway through, the tape chewed itself. <laughs> yeah. <I'm... laughs> so just, I, I, it was one of those things through most of my, the next 10 years of my life, it was like, I've got to find A, what that was called, <laughs> and B, what, how it finished. <laughs> what, how, it, how it ended, yeah. <laughs> exactly how it ended, you know. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing that really sticks in my head uh, as far as like the earliest kind of memories Go, this, is, you know. this is reminding me, now that you're making me think of a film, and mm -hmm. I still don't remember the title of it, but I remember uh -huh. watching a movie on, my dad rented it from Blockbuster, and uh, it was really terrifying. I was probably like five or six years old or something, um, <laughs> and I only remember the very end of the film, and I could, I've just never, like I can always describe it, but I can never figure out what the hell that movie is, and um, well, if anyone's listening, and if <laughs> here, here's the details. <laughs> Go, go. <laughs> Please help me find this movie. Uh, there's All I remember is there's a monster, uh, a woman who turned into a monster, and she was in a wedding dress. She married this guy, I guess. And I just remember in this particular last you know set of scene, and this is obviously in the climax of the film, uh, mm -hmm. I remember her hiding behind like a, a house, an abandoned house or something, or maybe their house. I don't exactly remember that. Um, and then coming out of nowhere and then, trying to attack him and um okay. that's all i have that's all i remember okay so that's not a lot to go on <laughs> i know it's not a lot to go on and that's what <laughs> it'll be one of those things it is it's one of those things and i bet you some of those details are slightly wrong you know as, oh, as, yeah, as, as memory as memory does you know it, it kind of flips it around so yeah th those those were the kind of things that stick in my head and it was only when it was later on maybe in the teens the teens that you started I started watching films that were kind of better thought of, if that makes mm -hmm. more, more sense at that stage. And I think the first one that really pops into my head of something that made me go, wow, uh, was Glory, the Denzel Washington, uh, Matthew Broderick kind of movie. 
I'm just sitting watching that with my dad. My dad would have been a big fan of that period of history, of American history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why he rented it at the time. And I kind of sat there and I knew nothing about that period of history of the American Civil War or anything like that. And it was the first movie that ever made me cry. Oh, yeah. And I don't cry at very many movies, I've got to say. And nearly all of them are to do with some sort of romance rather than romance. <laughs> In some ways, <laughs> you know, this kind of union of union brothers, so things like Jerry Maguire right. uh, get me. But, uh, but I remember sitting, thinking that and turning it off and going, well, I've never had a movie that emoted mm-hmm. me like that uh, or made me think or identify with another group of people that were at seven year old. You know, that, that wasn't the set of monsters or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, something, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something, something that, that, that were outside that spoke. That. Yeah, exactly right. You know, so um, that, that's the one that, that really, really stuck in my head as being something that I went, well, that was very different from what I'd seen before. You know? Yeah, I mean, that glory. I remember watching that back in high school um, when, when, when we were learning about the American Civil War. Um, yeah. Even though we, we, American history is shoved down our throat, as you probably <laughs> understand. Um, but yeah, no, there's a lot of really good Civil War films. Uh, Gloria definitely is definitely one of the best ones. Oh, I, I, you know, it, it didn't even have to be a good one, I think. That's, I think that's one of the things that just so happened that it, that it was good. No. Um, and also, it, it's the first one that I could ever watch that I remember thinking, my God, that is a really incredible acting performance as well. You know, somebody that, that you kind of just went, oh my God, that guy's actually acting. This isn't really happening. As, as, that's as a real happens. guy. So, <laughs> that, that, that's a real guy. You know, that, that could be a character. It's, 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 right. I don't know. It's one of those, those archetypes that you, you kind of take for granted maybe when you're a bit older, but when you're a young, impressionable mind, you kind of go, wow. Yeah. This is like, somebody, honestly, you know, with magic powers. Yeah, no, seriously, though. I mean, I have to, I mean, honestly, I'd, I'd have to dig deep to think about, you know, people like Denzel Washington who would, yeah. who would fit, fit that role for me when I was younger. I, I can't think of it right now, but um, I'm sure there are some people that stuck with my mind that I was like, like, I can't believe this is a, like, this person is just acting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. And actually being very, very incredibly believable, you know, and not mm-hmm. just kind of, like I say, this kind of shallow thing that, that an awful lot of, hit set but like disney movies are, are very surface level you know it's very much uh, about what's happening on screen rather than there being any real depth of character and i know more modern disney films changed that but around that time that wasn't what wasn't really what was happening you know right so you remember so you you said beta max and vhs is at church right and so you oh, it, was, it, was, it was it was the house next door to church oh, so that, that was exactly door. it it was literally somebody's back room so uh, that must have been somebody that, that was pirating it i can only imagine <laughs> and then taking two pounds for putting together these tapes for the lo- mm-hmm. people in the local area, you know, it was very much like a, a lucrative a pack- business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <right. laughs> that's, that's wonderful though. I mean, it's a good business to have though. I mean, honest, <laughs> honestly, I think you and I both could probably have some kind of video store business ourselves. Well, that's the dream, isn't it? In some ways that you just walk down and somebody walks into your house and they go, right, what do you want to watch? And you bring them into the room. And you go, right, have at it. I mean, the irony is, of course, for both me and you, that if you invite a common person who isn't really a film buff into your room, they will find literally nothing of interest. In their right, shelves, exactly. Probably, you know? oh my God, it's, that's such a real feeling. I, God, yeah, that's, that's it. You know, so, so it's, it's, it's kind of like a folly in some ways, but it makes me happy. And that's, that's, that's really what, what it comes down to. Um, so. Yeah, no, that makes me think of uh, the... Anytime I, yeah, like I, like you said, anytime I bring anybody who is not really into film at all, like they either get overwhelmed by the amount of yeah. things that there, there's choices or whatnot, and they just don't know what to, what they want to watch, or they just aren't interested in it anymore. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, but uh, yeah, it, for the, the, the few who do appreciate it and the few who do uh, come and see it, um, there, there's very few people in my life in this, ta- in my town that are, that do, some of them have been on this channel before yeah absolutely. and so but yeah i know it's 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 nice it's it's nice to have these movies but it's definitely a privilege so yeah absolutely i mean I, I, we've discussed this before like mm-hmm. the amount of times i put on a movie and, and say to myself i cannot believe i get to watch that movie from that time mm-hmm. in this kind of quality it just is mind-blowing in some ways that the, that there's a print exists as good looking as what i'm watching of a film from the 1920s like what? yeah I mean, yeah, like I, I, yeah, I just watched Faust and I watched Sunrise the other day and, you know, Mm. I've just started getting into Eureka myself. Um, And 
because it's just not really available here, obviously, and it just takes yeah. a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, I think these films from like 1926 or 1927 or even earlier, the amount of restoration and care is putting into it is just phenomenal. And what a, I mean, it's definitely one of the best times to be a film lover because it's just, it's just like almost like it's, it's, I feel like it's getting better. I don't know why. I, I think it's getting better as well because, I mean, it's a bit like what I was saying about the, about the back room of somebody's house. Mm-hmm. where I had a selection of movies that nobody had ever heard of to go and watch. And now I literally have a selection of anything, you know, and I'm fairly good quality between streaming services, between physical Blu-ray releases or otherwise, even, even upscale of DVDs these days, it looks pretty good. You know, uh, when you stick it on, if that's the only thing you have available. So it's like, it does you, you find yourself going down these rabbit holes all the time of, mm-hmm. right. You're just saying there's two silent movies you've watched in the past week. And you kind of go, right, give me another silent movie. And then you'll fall off the silent movie wagon for a few months and then you'll be back on and it'll, right. be, it'll be something else that you can kind of duck in and out. And when people say, like, what are you watching at the moment? It's kind of always a bit of everything. You yeah. Know, whatever, yeah. Whatever is, uh, whatever's holding your interest at the time, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I just recorded something today and I, I'm like, I'm all over the place with my interests and I, I know everyone else is too all the time and i i think that's really cool um we're able to do that I, I, i've had this discussion with other collectors as well but we kind of all own the same stuff right like a lot of a lot of us have exactly the same kind of key titles so if, if you'd watched any of the criterion pickups from the past month or two mm-hmm. there were a lot of them were very very similar but not everybody's watching the same stuff and i always find that's the stuff that's really interesting the, the bit that like if i'm watching one of your videos i want to find out what things that you're watching that I haven't quite got around to yet. And that's the bit that sparks in me to go and say, right, well, I'll watch that tonight or I'll prioritize that. Yeah, right? yeah, and yeah. I agree. And I think that's a, that's a really cool part of uh, of this whole community and stuff is is that we all get inspiration and, you know, much to your wallets and misery. <laughs> and some, sometimes, you know. <laughs> hey, our wallets are doing the hard work, the, the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been rough these past few months, I have to say, uh, but lockdown afforded me a bit more spare cash than than what there probably was before that, you know. Yeah, uh, we're definitely uh, lucky, and I'm I'm glad that uh, we're we're able to, you know, at least you know fund a lot of this stuff. And I know a lot of us work hard and and to get this kind of stuff too, and that's a whole nother conversation. Um, yeah. But um, uh, moving on from kind of those those early memories, um, do you remember when? you got that obsession was it glory or like like okay now i can move forward with just watching this off and on and and like be obsessed with this uh, well, that's an interesting one because film was always but again it was one of those things i only realized in my mid-20s when people say right well, have you seen this film and, see, and invariably my answer was yes right so that obviously like we all have our gaps of famous films that we haven't seen but yeah, by and large i'd seen i'd seen a lot of movies that a lot of people hadn't and it, and it, you never really think you're any different from other people, but that was kind of our pastime as a family. Not that we'll watch films together, but we'll watch them in pairs. I'd watch them with my dad, I'd watch them with my sister, I'd watch them with my, but very rarely as a family. Like we weren't really a cinema going um, family, but movies were always there. It's kind mm-hmm. of an odd thing. And then I would say, I'd run the mid, I'd run my mid twenties. I kind of fell off the wagon with movies a little bit. I found everything a bit samey. Uh, you, the idea of the Hollywood end, and you knew films were going to end a certain way, and it was the very odd one, like the ones that stick in my head, like Arlington Road. If you've ever seen Arlington Road, not as a magnificent movie or anything, but it has a very different ending, and it, it kind of catches you off guard. But those kind of things happened very rarely uh, right. around that time. Um, and I kind of fell off and played a lot more video games when I was looking for good and interesting stories. I would spend the time doing that and when I was younger maybe in my teens I was reading so you're always searching for good ways that stories are told to you and doing that and for a while movies were ticking along the background but they weren't an obsession and I would say the obsession only really came in the early 30s so maybe about 10 years ago mm-hmm. um, when the Blu-ray started coming out uh, or maybe even slightly back before when DVD came out and the special features started coming out I remember you know, I need to get a DVD player because I'd like to know more about the filmmaking process. 
Uh, and I remember one of the first ones was American Beauty that I got. And it just so happens that not only is American Beauty one of my favorite movies, it's in, just an incredible movie, if you ask me. Right. But one of the special features has Conrad Hall, uh, the director of photography, one of the famous ones. And he talked through lighting that movie. It wasn't a, pu- a total commentary. I think it was like a, I think it's like a small um, section that he does of how he likes the thing. I remember just being kind of blown away and going, there's way more to this than I ever thought than just kind of moving images on screen. And you started noticing that a bit in other movies then. Mm-hmm. You started to notice things that were lit. And okay, I'd be sitting beside my dad and I'd be going, oh my God, this is obviously blowing my head off. How well this is lit and how they use the light and where's the light source in this room? Well, it must be a, like a light there rather than just a window open. And it's funny going, you say that. You I, need, about? I need to get this down. <laughs> 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 Let me get that down. And that way everyone can not see this really pale guy in here. But sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to break yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. So it was that, and then you know, there was, there was some, but again, I fell off it. But it wasn't until I would say, like, the kind of level of boutique uh, Blu ray came out, and I would probably credit the film that started the session as being 2001 because the, the 2001 story that I tell is I seen it maybe in my early 20s, and I hated it. Mm-hmm. I get that. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was a story that did nothing. It was full of obscure imagery. It was very moving. There was hardly any dialogue. There was nothing to it. And I had a pigeonhole as being what a lot of nonsense. People are um, trying to project something on the screen there that just isn't <laughs> there, right? You know, people trying to sound smart. And it came out in Blu ray. And I remember buying it because it was like one of those show, sorry, showcase discs because. It's obviously a very good looking movie. I remember sticking on, and for about the first 20 minutes, I went, See, what am I doing? Why did I buy this? <laughs> like, I'll see, why, why did I torture myself and buy this? And by the end of it, I just remember going, Oh my God, what a movie. You know, and you just kind of go, And I think a lot of that comes from maturation as a person. Oh, you know absolutely. I mean? As you mature and you understand more about life and you more, understand more about yourself, I think, is, is probably what it, what it comes down to. And so I often say, like, watching things repeatedly with a gap, time gap in between can totally transform um, the films that are there, especially as you get older and you maybe have your own family and things. There are movies that just resonate with you that just will break you that you would never have given the time of day to beforehand, you know? And uh, I always find that really, really interesting just to kind of see those stages of life reflected in the, f- the films and the ones that you appreciate, you know? No, I, that's a hundred percent correct. I mean, there, yeah, like, yeah, I have very similar stories with films that are just like my 2001 for you, Mm -hmm. for you, you know, that I, I definitely did not like when I was younger. And when I got older, I I revisited it. I don't even know why I was revisiting it. I, you know, yeah, even masochism, you know, statism or machism, you know? Yeah. Well, masochism, you know, I got tattoos and stuff, so I'm all about it. So, um, (laughs) you know, all this pain, um, but anyway, yeah, no, I just, I, yeah. And then I would, because of the time in my life that was uh, whatever was happening at that moment, it, it resonated more. It made more sense. It, mm-hmm. um, it, it was a motive. I had, a, I had emotion attached to it instead of just seeing it as like, maybe like, Oh, this is an art house film that really is just uppity and everyone just is saying this is, they're projecting, <laughs> they're projecting something else. Maybe their insecurities <laughs> on something <laughs> Because they think they're smarter than the, you know, like, because they like this film or something. And yes. they're, they're there's, some... a, there's a great, um, on a, a disc I watch called Curling, a film by Danny Cote. Uh, he's talking about, about this very phenomenon in, in, in one of the extras. And he basically said that, you know, when you watch a film, there's two ways to watch it. You can watch it passively. You want it to entertain you. And I would say that's true for nearly all young kids when they're watching films. They need to be entertained. And if it's not, something's not happening all the time for them, they will lose interest. Um, so that, that's it. And I, I certainly think that carries through an awful lot of action movies, etc. that I would have watched when I was, you know, in my teens and early 20s, etc. But then there is the, the active movie watcher. So the person who projects themselves onto the characters on the screen or onto the situation. And I think it's at that stage that you, you get enjoyment out of movies that you never would have beforehand, you know? You, you don't necessarily have to be entertained, but you can just kind of identify with the underlying theme of the movie and go, well, that was beautiful, or that was heart-wrenching, or that was painful, 
with things that you never would have even given a moment's thought to beforehand. And I, and I think it was a very poignant kind of film that he made because he didn't make a judgment call on it. He didn't say one was better than the other one, but he just said there are just certain types of movies that people will make that people will get something different out of depending on how much they invest themselves in the characters that I've created or that another filmmaker has created. And it, also looks great. it plays on that. And that makes me think of the times that I get extremely frustrated with um, either significant others or our friends or any kind of relationship where I, something really like really, really matters to me, like a film that really, really matters to yeah. me or resonates with me and they just cannot see it or aren't, aren't at the same level. And part of me, like, obviously that's a, that's a selfish struggle, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's not so. yeah, yeah. yeah. But at, at the other time, you know, like with those, like I said, significant others or like maybe deeper meaning uh, like a, a really good friend or like a best friend or, or whatnot um it's like they'll understand but like they may not understand and it's so hard to co- uh, communicate that and i and it, yeah it's like you said it's you have some it's something that you have to go through yourself and it's wherever you're at in life and it's nobody knows what you're thinking all the time and you know I frozen. There you go. I'm back. Yeah, I switched to, switched to cellular just in case. Uh, grand. That should be good now. Did you hear what I was I finished it? No, I, I, you froze just as you were starting. Oh, I was going to say that um, I, you know, it was like significant others or like a best friend or whatnot. Um, yeah. Listening to your stories or whatever that you're explaining to them, why this means so much to you. Uh, and they can they can never get in your headspace because they're they're not um, they're not at the same level that you are at, and or at least they're never in the same spot, and uh, vice versa too. The things that they really care about, you can never get to that spot your, yourself. And to me, like as somebody who's like I'm, I'm sure most of us who are watching this are always trying to suck knowledge up as much as they can. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. It's to me. It, I don't know why, but it's frustrating to me that I can't get into other people's headspaces about. <laughs> like, I don't know why, but it's just a, a thought I have sometimes. It's like, how in the world do you not like this movie, or how in the world do I love this movie and you hate it, or you know what? what yeah, p- part of that's validation, isn't it? Because right, if you get something out, out of it, you want them to get out of it what you got out of it because you got value out of it. You know what I mean? You, it made you feel something and you feel that's worth feeling. So you need kind of validation. The other, the example that I would use for that is, um, I remember sitting one night watching Richard Linklater's Boyhood, right? And we watched all the Boyhood, Boyhood being quite a long film. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we never spoke at all through the entire film. We just watched it possibly. And all I could think through the entire movie was how just an incredible feat of fil- filmmaking it was. You know, the fact that this was the same cast over such an extended period. I, I'm looking at it going like, the practicalities of, of even thinking and setting out to do this plus the fact that it, I think it's really well acted and the film ended and uh, tried us up and I turned to the wife and went well and she went wow and I said well yes I agree wow what a movie she says I'm never getting those two and a half hours of my life back <laughs> oh. <laughs> and she was saying wow for one reason <laughs> yeah. I, was, I thought we were talking about exactly the same thing and I was like yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 interesting that you have that, that viewpoint of it uh-huh. uh, <laughs> and that's when you respond with like well here's the thing boyhood <laughs> girlhood is a little bit- <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. it's funny to say yeah. so uh yeah but boyhood i i just, I just think it, it still is incredible oh uh, i mean i mean finish. you can see behind me i'm a big link yeah. boy, so <laughs> i really love i love his stuff and so got the before yeah. trilogy uh poster it. it's just just over your right ear yeah, and there, well, there's a before trilogy right there, and then there's the posters before sunrise, sunset, and midnight behind all the the Criterion stuff. But um, yeah, no, Boyhood's an uh, amazing film just, uh, just from the feet alone, right? And yeah, I, yeah, I like that, that that example of not having the same match there with saying exactly. That. We were using the same words, but actually completely different emotions, which I, I right. just thought was 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 really nice, you know. So. Um, I guess going from there, what are you currently watching right now? So, like I said, a bit of everything. Um, I've kind of, I tend to jump about from this and that. I'm trying at the moment, the thing that I'm trying to do at the moment is watch more modern filmmakers. Uh, there was uh, another uh, YouTube channel that I was watching, Salty Ronin, and he'd talked about The Lobster by Yorgos Lanthimos. And 
like obviously I'd heard of the favourite, but I hadn't seen the favourite and I hadn't seen that or Dog Tooth or whatever. So I watched mm-hmm. Lobster and then I subsequently watched uh, The Favourite, etc. And I thought, these are really interesting movies. These, these kind of movies were not made when I was growing up or certainly they weren't available to me when I was growing up. That kind of... It's nearly like everybody's an auteur in some ways these days. You know, <laughs> yeah. people... Film school obviously is a lot more prevalent these days and people study filmmaking far more than, than they probably ever ever did. Uh, because if you listen to, like, um, a lot of the old masters talk, they basically learn by watching and observing others. Do you know, that seemed to be a way that a lot of them did it. So I, I've kind of been on this push to watch modern filmmakers while still doing world cinema. So I've been, I've been watching Lucrezia Martel from Argentina, Rita Acevedo. <laughs> Beta Gomez from Portugal and things, just things that aren't even available on physical media in some ways. And like, I know you know that that I watched that uh, and you watched as well. Women make film mm-hmm. earlier on the year. The Mark Cousins documentary, who's a, yeah. a fellow. Marvelous. Marvelous uh, documentary. Oh, it's it's incredible. Um, and I'm still not. I've still got the very last bit of it to go. But that documentary has changed how I watch films for the rest of my life. Things like uh, every time the camera moves on screen now, you're you think yourself to what end? What, what's he moving it for? Yeah, what's the what's the is there a, is there a, like a male gaze here, or is there like yeah, is there exactly something right. the, going on with like like what the, with like the, a character's point of view, or you know? It, yeah, I, and I was watching Let the Sunshine In, which is a Claire Denis movie. Um, oh, where to go? It's on Criterion, I think there. I think it is but anyway it, there's this scene that starts the bar where the pendulum the film just swing or the camera just swings like a pendulum back and forth between two people but it's so soft you've nearly not noticed it if you weren't looking for it but I, I just can't help but notice those things now in movies where i just never would have seen them beforehand and i don't know whether it makes the film any better but it makes my enjoyment of it just that much and it's richer more. yeah it's richer it's it just yeah. it adds another thing to the movie that makes me appreciate the kind of the thought process and what went into making that movie, the craft of it probably more so than anything else. And uh, it kind of blows my mind, especially in, in a lot of these modern films that they all have these touches in them, whether things are stagnant or lots. People love doorways in modern movies, like framing yeah. things through doorways. That, that, that happens a lot, a lot of different direct, directors. Grew, but up that's, on the, that's, grew up on those seventies and eighties horror films with doorways. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. So, um, so that I've been watching a lot of that recently, um, to try and spread my wings a little bit. I don't know. It's 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 a never ending search for knowledge, isn't it? Really, when you watch yeah. when you watch films, you want to just so you want to have watched all your movies. That's really what it is for all the films that you have behind you and all your butt. You want to have already watched them. Yeah, well, good luck with that for me. <laughs> I know. I mean, we're all we're all the same. Let's be honest. It's like right. a never ending pile of of death in some ways <laughs> is, is, is it's nearly crushing death and taxes some ways. yeah death and taxes <laughs> but it's nearly crushing the weight of it but it's also filled with like this hope of like the next great thing that you're gonna yeah. see and, and that you're gonna find and uh, yeah so so that seems like a never end every year you find two or three filmmakers that you've oh. never seen beforehand that everybody else seemed to have be aware of yeah but you've never got round of but then all of a sudden you've watched two or three of the movies and you get it you understand it to a certain degree or you go they're not for me <laughs> yeah exactly i mean like this year for me robert altman was like I- i've seen mm. robert altman films you know before a-, a few of them but i never like associated them with somebody who directed it or or, or whatnot or had some kind yeah. of you know kind of different crafts or you know elements about them that would you know permeate throughout their career or whatever or yeah. someone like uh, Abbas Kurosami like oh, yeah. that's another like blind spot of mine until you know you know months months ago when I kind of came back from China and I you know I watched Close Up first and then I watched mm-hmm. the Coker trilogy and and then I just got Taste of Cherry and I'm like man I'm blown away by this this director like I cannot believe it how, how... It's, it's one of those things like Abbas Kirstami <laughs> if I had seen an Abbas Kirstami uh, film when I was in my 20s I don't think it would have resonated with me at all in fact I think I would have been actively turned off because th- there's a lot of very subtle things going on in Kirstami's, uh, Kirstami's work that are kind of beautiful like uh, it's the difference I was, I was explaining where's my friend's house to my wife she went out for the afternoon she came home 
and she says, what have you done this afternoon? I says, well, I've watched this movie and it's, it's done things to me, I have to say. Well, mm-hmm. what's it about? And you tell the premise of where, Where's My Friend's House and it is literally nothing. Uh-huh, yeah. I mean, somebody leaves their homework with a, another boy and he goes to return the homework book. I mean, that, that, that's pretty much that's the Pretty much the right premise, there. yeah. Yeah, and you just go, but it's the sweetest thing in the world in some ways of the yeah. innocence of that young boy and then the ignorance nearly of everybody else that's, oh, that's yeah. around him and how important it is to him until he meets the old man. Well, like on spoilers, etc. Yeah, in, yeah. In the thing. But uh, but but just like this incredible film that I, like, there's nothing to. There's, there really is not a lot to. Uh, but the other filmmaking elevated it, you know. Yeah, no, and some someone like Aristami and a lot of probably the filmmakers that we really like have those those really simplistic human touches about yeah. their their films that you know like like we've been saying this whole time. It just at a certain time in our lives it resonated with it and it. It just made it just made sense, and you know, explaining it, it's 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 you can't explain it, you can't explain why why it's so touching and why it's so beautiful. Um, it's just really but that's why we make that's why we make movie movies or films about movies is because we try, you, yeah, because you want to try, you know, you, you want you want to kind of share why this was important to you, you know. Uh, I think that's uh, that's again that never ending search for the perfect description of the perfect emotion, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of emotions, uh, what is your favorite film? Oh, dear. Well, for all the cool movies that I have ever seen, my stock answer to this, I even do this ones with uh, the people that I teach, because I often say there's a, there's two favorite movies in your life. Yeah, there's I, the oh, one I, that you tell people. There's the one that you tell people that's the kind of cool movie, and then there's yeah. your actual favorite movie. So my actual favorite movie, which is the proper answer, is Sister Act 2. Um, <laughs> and I know it's stereotypical. I know it's it's cliche, it's nearly paint by numbers movie, but that film gives me joy that few other films can ever match in any kind of way possible. But a couple of the fact that you know I am a sucker for a musical anyway. I do love a musical. Um, so nearly any of the music. I mean, I still like Chicago. I know it's one of those things that everybody says they don't like Chicago anywhere. I like Chicago. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just, 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 just the way that it goes. Baz Luhrmann movies are fantastic. Um, so yeah, yeah. Sister Act Two, Sister Act Two is is the one. If I was going to say uh, what my favorite movie is, what's the uh, so that's your actual answer, right? And what's that's the, my actual answer. Yeah, what's the cool answer? The cool answer. Well, see, this would have changed more in previous in previous years because I used to say for years it was LA Confidential. That was the one that uh, that I would have said for years. And uh, but now it's really tough. I'm I'm thinking about doing a, a top movies of my life kind of thing at the moment, but it's just impossible. I mean, it changes on a daily basis. Oh yeah, it's so really it kind of feels it, it feels folly like. I could name you the favorite movies of this year. I could name you the favorite movies of the past three or four years. I would say, though, in general, your favorite movie that you're at, that is in that conversation is associated with something else around that time. Oh yeah, you know, uh, with a life event or mm-hmm. uh, something of that that ilk. So I don't know. I'll say LA Confidential because that's the that's the one that I that I always did. It was another one of those films that it, that. There's more to that movie going on just telling a noirish detective right, story. Right, right. If you know what well, I mean, there's real craft in it. Mm-hmm. And Danny, De- Danny DeVito approves of it, so. I, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And plus, for, for me, anyway, Guy Pearce being in it, that, the last time I'd seen Guy Pearce was in an Australian soup that was shown in the UK. So the, the absolute horror and shock of him seeing in this dramatic role, and not only being in the dramatic role, but being pretty incredible in the, in the role mm-hmm. as well, um, kind of made that... Uh, they're all, all, all the stronger. Plus, the very when uh, Kevin Spacey says the words Rolo Tomasi in the movie, and it's just one of those magic movie moments where the cogs are spinning in your head mm-hmm. way ahead of anybody else in the screen, which I always think is just the act of great screenwriting. Is when if you can have the viewer being a step ahead of the characters in the screen, but without it being a noticeable difference, then you've done your job. Really yeah, no, there's well, you know. uh, there's a whole conversation about good script writing we, we could probably mm-hmm. have. Um, but no, you, it's really funny that you say that you have your actual answer versus your because I'm a I'm in a teacher I'm a teacher as well as you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, every single I don't think I I don't even know if I've even said this on the channel, 
but um, I always do a question of the day for my students. Um, okay. Kind of get their mind off of whatever we're talking about that day. Uh, and I always start off day one with what is your favorite film? Uh, and I always say, I always, I kind of give them a little asterisk. I, I tell them, I will probably judge you for your answer. Uh, just know this. Just because <laughs> I like to give them a little bit of shit. So, um, yeah. you know, and and then I obviously listen to the responses. Some of them have been hilarious. Um, some of them have been pretty <laughs> standard. Um, you know, something hilarious would be something like, I think back in, whenever Deadpool came out, they said Deadpool. I was like, the fi your favorite film is Deadpool. And that came out, what, February of this year? Like, <laughs> that's your favorite film of all time. Um, or, you know, typical answers would be like Shawshank Redemption, which is a great film, you know. Yeah, um, it is, yeah. But, um, you know, typical. So my typical answer I would normally always say is Lord of the Rings. And I would say the extended, okay. it, and they're all one movie. <laughs> so. Okay. And they're all. It's you get, good night. Yeah. And then my cool answer is in Bruges. So, yeah, and then Bruce is, is a fabulous movie as well. Actually, you're right. It's, it's, it's yeah, the, the, there you are. I usually, I usually spot it nearly every time I'm, I'm watching there the videos. Is. It's it's very Northern Irish humor. Uh, I think very much so. Even though uh, Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell are both are both from 100 miles south of me, but uh, I I think it's very um it's very much of the of that feeling. I know. Um, I can well, yeah, good. I'm sc good screenwriting with M McDonough, you know. Mark McDonough, yeah, yeah, it, it really, really brilliant screenwriting for it, and uh, of course, that addition behind you has the the screenplay in it. So yeah, all, and I, I, I know his earlier work. He did a lot of um, theater, so yeah. So almost, well, yeah. There's, but there's, there's another thing that we're very lucky where I live anyway to have a couple of major theaters. So I mean, the theater's not being open at the moment. There's a bit of a a cry and shame and it's a bit, a bit of a hole in everybody's kind of life around here, I think, because that would have been the main focus outside of movies for, for people that, that, that live around here. We're very blessed that way, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. There's, there is something about that's deeper about, you know, these kind of collective places that we would find entertainment during something like mm -hmm. this. Um, yeah. You know, back in community college day of, of my life, I remember writing a, a paper on um, the effect of movie theaters on during the, in the great depression here okay. in the States and, and how much something like King Kong, you know, was like such a big deal for so many people, even though everyone was so financially stabbed, you know, and just dry and everyone was just so defeated, but everyone escaped to the movies, you know, just to, um, you know, have that entertainment. It was a cheap way of, of doing that. And I, I feel like yeah. theater definitely developed that way at the very beginning. Um, you know, maybe, and obviously it has some higher art to it, but um, I, yeah, I, I get that. But that, that community space, I mean, it's the same with any packed uh, movie theater that you've ever been to and watched an opening night or been in there when it's been completely fresh that nobody's spoke about. Like I can think of going to see Pulp Fiction when it first came out, I can speak of, you know, and just that there's an, a feeling in the room that is just, that elevates that movie again, you know, beyond what's on the screen, beyond the script writer, beyond the writing, beyond those things, that, that group of people in the room all kind of live that the each moment of that movie together because they are fresh to it. There's been nothing spoiled or nothing tainted about it. It was a very, um, very singular experience, you know, so there's plenty of experiences and I think that most movie goers can think of, uh, of experiences like that, I would imagine. Oh yeah. No, I can, I can think of right now, right now I have, I have several in my life that, you know, just going in so fresh and uh, with uh, such a receptive crowd is always mm -hmm. something that like you, you just can't forget. So I get that. Yeah. Um, so I guess, uh, I guess this leads up to um, the question of, so with all of this love of film and just knowledge and whatnot, so what do you think of film currently? What does it mean to you in your life? Like how, how, how is it, how does it play a role? That's a very good very good question. I would say in the past two years, it has become my main form of storytelling. I mean, I said that the books, I did video games, I did TV shows for a long while. Um, and I think TV shows are in that mode now of everything feels the same. Mm -hmm. um, that I was talking about when I was feeling about movies in that stage. So I'm finding the movies are these short, punchy, thing that I can dip into any era and get something out of. Right. You know, nothing ever feels the same week on week. And because I'm in the fortunate position to have a large film library of myself, 
I can just kind of run and go and take that. So I watched the silent movie last night. The night before that, I watched a Japanese samurai flick. You know, uh, I mean, it's very disparate things. Um, so I tend to aim to watch maybe about five movies a week. You know, between uh, often what happens is I'll, I'll go to bed one night and watch the first half or something, yeah, and then pick it up. You know, what? But I get that. When I I, the um, yeah. So I, I always like to make a start and something. And sometimes something grabs you so much that you make the end of it and you're tired the next day. So be mm-hmm. it. But uh, about uh, I hope for about five to six movies a week, something like that, to try and get me through. And it get, it energizes me. Like the, there's just no other way to put it. I I get something out of it that's not just passively sit and watch some TV. Or as my parents would have said, you know, many many years ago, you got to get outside. <laughs> you can't be watching TV all day. It's no good for you. I beg to differ. There's just definitely something there. I've, I've definitely grown as a person. My understanding of other people and other cultures would not be anywhere near oh it my as God, far yeah. as if it wasn't for film. And especially in the film watching of the past 10, 15 years, especially. Um, because it, it definitely has changed me and educated me and, and made my empathy level rise. And still so far to go. I mean, that's the, the, the truth of, of everything, you know. There's still much more to experience and much more to do. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, I, I, I mirror a lot of those, those thoughts, especially with um, just my empathy levels growing so much more just because of, of, of things that we would never experience and still would never experience mm-hmm. just because you would see, you know, like we were talking earlier when we were talking about uh, women make film with that Mark Cousins yes. documentary, they would just explore an angle or they would talk about this specific um, you know, technique that they someone would use, and you would be like, "What? Well, oh, okay, I guess I don't ever look at it this way." And so, yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's it's something like that that I, I think that constant learning that we have. Um, it, it's it's a positive. Like, um, you know, going back to what your parents were like, "Hey, get out, get outside." <laughs> it's a, it's a positive thing that we're like. It's associated with ne- maybe negativity, like sitting around watching TV all the time. Um, um, but at the end of the day, I feel like with our community and a lot of people out here, a lot of us are very much like proactive and like active with the things that we're consuming and we're, we're you know, obviously talking about it. Yeah. And, and, and the other side of the coin is that it has been and always will be a core part of my, mine and my wife's relationship. You know what I mean? It's been something that we've always enjoyed doing together. And never, I have to say very much to her credit, We've never fallen into the ordinary, normal things, couple date night movies. Like the one mm-hmm. example they always use many, many years ago when we first started going out together it was Valentine's Night and, you know, we were going to pick what movie we were going to watch. And it just so happened I had recorded 13 Assassins by Takashi Miike. Oh, nice. And I said, well, do you want to watch a summer movie? And she went, yeah. And <laughs> two of us just both absolutely loved it, you know. And, yeah. and you're speaking to friends, what do you listen to? Well, what's the movie? What do you watch? And it was insert whatever rom com of the thing was. Well, I got to watch Thirteen Assassins, and it was awesome, you know. And that we both thoroughly enjoyed it. So often, what happens is that she will let me pick the movie, except maybe on certain nights where she'll be like, "No, bring up the choice," but she'll nearly always go for the nineteen thirties, forties Hollywood movie. And uh, they've always been a great source of uh, enjoyment. You nearly, you nearly can't go wrong in many ways when uh, Cary Grant or Jimmy Stewart or Catherine oh, Hepburn no. or somebody is on screen and it's just like, again, how lucky are we to watch a movie of this age and this class in the kind of quality that we do. It just blows my mind on a daily basis. I'm just glad that you have somebody in your life that like shares that appreciation. I think that's really cool. Um, yeah. I mean, cool being the, the, the simplest of adjectives yeah. when I'm describing this, but you know, in the sense that you just, you have somebody that, you know, knows you and you're not, and that you, you can just fill out things. And I guess, you know, something like 13 assassins can happen on Valentine's day, which is absolutely it was just wonderful. And uh, I, I really enjoy that. And I think that's what I, I think. Another, I think a, a big thing that we haven't talked about on this channel or just in general is mm-hmm. that I don't think um, we completely talk about the people we watch movies with you know, like mm-hmm. we have so many memories associated with so many different films. Um, and that's with other people that we watched it with, either be good or bad or whatever. Um, but like, you know, there's some 
there's some key things about our, our growth if we take movies seriously um, that mm-hmm. we can get from that, I think. Yeah, and, and, and like I have two, two girls, both 10 and 12, and I come to cinema, there are certain types of movies that I watch that I watch them rather than watch the movie. If that oh, yeah, sense. that's that's good. So, like, going to watch the last three Star Wars movies, I realized, like, I was super hyped to go and watch The Force Awakens, for instance, and then mm-hmm. on The Last Jedi. But I realized halfway watched, through watching The Last Jedi that what I was enjoying about it wasn't a tenth of what my eldest daughter was enjoying. Oh, yeah. And and you kind of, I kind of realized at that point, these films aren't for me anymore. After yeah. being the target, Great audience for that for I don't know how many years of my life and and always been feeling like I am a Star Star Wars fan like that that's me. Uh, I'm not the audience for those anymore, but I can get as much enjoyment by just seeing the wide eyed awe that mm-hmm. I had obviously at the same age through them and then just every movie that they come out of sometimes it's just the greatest movie that they have ever seen. It's the Deadpool effect. Yeah, about, yeah, you know, but they're not they're not eighteen, nineteen years old, and <laughs> well, they're not eighteen, nineteen years old. But but it is that instant gratification of well, I've just never seen anything like that. That is just the right. best movie I've ever seen, you know. And it's just and there is some, something really strong about the fact that there are very strong female characters in those films. Oh, absolutely. For, for my age, it was a strong male character, you know, young man that was going. So you definitely do need that kind of representation on screen that people gravitate to, you know, and I think that's really important and something that but all like to see continue going further, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. And I actually, now, now that you're talking about all this, I'm, I'm like imagining being an uncle or a father someday and just being very excited about that process for my, my nephew, my niece or my son or my daughter. You just, yeah. I, I, you know, it, that's going to be something that I, I like, that's, that's the reason life is so good, you know? Yeah. So I get that. Um, life exists for our relationships with other people i mean that, that, that's yeah. pr- that's pretty much the the, the reason that you know f- for life because yeah. we it's it's a two-way thing you get something out of it they get something out of it uh, but, but between the two of you you get something out of it that's greater than all that all together you know yeah i think this is a this is a wonderful ending to this this interview what do you think <laughs> oh yeah yeah something too um so where can everyone find you uh they can find me on youtube um my YouTube or my name is just my YouTube channel um, and they can find my ramblings. I generally talk about what I've been watching more so than anything else um, because you know when I decided that I wanted to start a YouTube channel I felt that that's the kind of content that I'd like to see uh, myself so I just kind of thought Let, let's do more of that um, and if anybody watches that would be all the better you know that's just the, yeah. the, the, it's like, a, like a bonus that goes along with it and there's plenty of people that are like mine so you can find me there that's probably the main place yeah, that's, I mean, that's how I started. I just, you know, like, it's like, I like movies. I, I want to talk about the things that, uh, that me and my friends are doing right now. And like, yeah, just, yeah and just, yeah, that's, um, that's the best way to do YouTube, in my opinion. So, I yeah, I think it'll keep it fresh. Because if, I think if you, if you spend your time looking at metrics and thinking, God, that movie or that video that I made on that one particular topic did really well. And then you feel like you have to churn out all your movies like that. I, oh, yeah. I, I know that struggle. <laughs> yeah. And at a certain point, I know this is an easy thing to say, but I'm not, if anybody watches the moving comments on the, or the video and what comments at all, that's a plus. Like literally right. one person, two people. And like, I don't have very many subscribers, but the ones that, that do watch my thing comment all the time, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that that's enough just to, to make you think this is worthwhile because it's like you were saying, if you don't have those people around you that are watching similar kind of movies with you that you can talk about in day to day, then that fills the gap for that very nicely, you know? Yeah. And that's the wonderful thing about this whole thing. Uh, this, this, I mean, this community is just so wonderful and I, I'm glad that, that I'm glad that we're a part of it. You know, we're very lucky yeah, people. It's so. very cool. I have to say. All right. Well, do you have any final thoughts about, about anything? Uh, first, just thanks for having me on. You know, I'm a fan of the series anyway. And, uh, the guests we've had on before have been kind of awesome so uh a bit intimidated to come on but uh, really enjoyed it really, i'm really intimidated every time you know i like <laughs> i just i mean naturally uh i've over the years met a lot of these people you know just on youtube mm-hmm. obviously i've never met anybody <laughs> um but yeah no i just i've 
you know, there's, there's so many people and there's a lot of people I haven't met. And I'm sure people who watch this, that comment that I still haven't seen their content. And like, I feel, I feel very guilty about that kind of stuff. Um, just cause of my, my time, which is a good joke for everybody. Um, <laughs> but you know, I just like, you know, there's not enough time in the day, but at the same time, I would at least like to sit down with a lot of uh, my friends on YouTube or the friends that I could potentially meet. And um, yeah, just have a conversation with them about just about things. And I, I think that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it is. And like, it's, like I'll say, it's not a big community, the boutique Blu-ray community. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of niche within a niche market. <laughs> yeah. So the same people that comment in your videos, comment in mine, comment in everybody else's, you know, it's the same people that float around all those things. Yeah. But we all have a common passion. And, and uh, I think that's very, very, very cool. Yeah, me too. Well, all right. I hope everyone is able to go follow Chris Moen's YouTube channel because it's wonderful. Um, I've, I've seen quite a few of his videos and I, I love every one of them that I've seen. And so he's got a lot of really great content on there. Um, um, please engage with us down in the comment section. I hope uh, that a lot of you learned something. I'm sure maybe sparked an idea or, or something. And I hope you made it to the end of this video as well because um, I know it's a long one. So um, give this video a like. Uh, Share this video, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you next time. I'm not Jones and around.